Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another online lecture for the Chem Complete series, Organic Chemistry 2. And we're working with benzene reactions today. We are going to take a look at halogenation of benzene. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So one of the pretty common reactions that we have with aromatic rings is that we can halogenate the ring by using Br2 or Cl2. You can also use I2 for iodine. And you will need some sort of a metal catalyst that usually goes with this. So I'm going to use Br2 for our example here. Okay. But what I would do is I would say, all right, Br2 and FeBr3. Now, your instructor, your teacher, or your, your textbook may show you different metals. So they may show you aluminum tribromide. They may show you uh, zinc metal or something else. The metal is going to be important as a Lewis acid when you have, um, basically when you're trying to create an electrophile out of this. So the first step that occurs here, because the Br-Br bond isn't particularly polar to begin with. And aromatic systems are very stable. So we need to sort of create a, a very nice electrophile for them to go after if they're going to give up aromaticity for the meantime. As we sort of as an intermediate as we go through that reaction. So what ends up happening is the metal catalyst, which is a Lewis acid, has a partial positive charge. And that's because these halogens have partial negative charges that are found around the metal catalyst, right? And so this partial positive correlating to this bromine, this creates a partial negative charge, right? It's kind of inducing this partial negative charge here. So it encourages the bromine to leave and pair up with this grouping here so that we end up with Fe br4 minus and you're going to see this type of behavior as we go through a lot of the reactions where we need a catalyst in order to really produce a nice electrophile so what's left is we also have and we have br plus that comes out of this as well as an electrophile so it's really the br plus that the aromatic ring is going to go after so if I take a look at my aromatic system, and now we understand where this is coming from, so I will rewrite this up here. We would have Br2 and FeBr3. And I can generate Br plus with this. So I will go ahead and have the ring attack that electrophile, the Br plus. And what I end up with is like many of the benzene intermediates that we have seen, I end up with the bromine adding and the hydrogen that's there. That hydrogen is important because it's going to return the aromatic character to the ring at the end of the reaction. And then I would have resonance forms here. So I'm going to go ahead and redraw that structure because that's one of them, right? So this would be one resonance form. It's a plus charge there. And then I could move the electrons over from the aromatic ring. Remember that these are equivalent when we're looking at these. So the charge always lands ortho, para, and then ortho to the group that's being added. So if you take a look here, that first example to the left, the charge was found ortho to the bromo group. Now the charge is found para to that bromo group. And then it will also land ortho to the bromo group one more time if I decide to move the other set of electrons over. And remember when we do resonance that dealing with resonance, resonance is really a mixture of all forms. It's delocalizing these electrons or the electron property over the entire system. It's not that any one true resonance form exists at a given time. It's really a mixture of all of them. And so these are the three different resonance structures that we would have here. And if I were to continue, it would be the FeBr4 
for minus that we really got from this first step. So keep in mind that this also formed up here when we get the BR plus, right? So we have this. This is going to act as the base that will remove the hydrogen. The electrons will go back to the aromatic ring, and then we end up with our halogenated ring. And we have a bromine on it. Okay, so that is halogenation of aromatic rings, a pretty simple process overall. Uh, just keep in mind that there is some variety that you can use here. So bromination is one option. You could also do a chlorination. So let's go ahead. We'll make a, a brief list here, but these are all going to follow the same premise. Okay, so you can do a Cl2 FeCl3. And that's going to give you a chlorination. Okay, you can have the one we just saw, which is Br2 and FeBr3 bromination. And then you'll see different varieties of how to do iodine. Um, but basically, Usually, the one I come across most often is copper, like this. It would behave in a similar fashion, and it would create an I+, plus, okay? Uh, and in this case, you could add an iodine to the ring. So all of these are possible reactions. Um, I would say the one you probably see most often is the bromination in textbooks and things like that, but all of these are plausible halogenations for the aromatic ring and they would follow the same mechanism so you know the FeCl3 or the copper or iodide uh, that's all going to coordinate in order to form Cl plus Br plus or I plus respectively then you go through your electrophilic attack and you substitute in place the hydrogen so that covers halogenation for aromatic systems not too complicated uh, there are some other reactions we're going to talk about that are similar in nature to this. The Friedel-Crafts reaction is one of the ones coming up that you will see momentarily if you're continuing to watch this. And other than that, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I am happy to take any questions in the comments section and try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, remember that subscribing is the quickest way to find when I release new information and updates, which I will try to get out as often as possible. Thank you guys for taking the time to learn with me today. Have an excellent rest of the day, and I will see you next time. Take care.